Good morning. We told in Genesis 5 verse 21 that Enoch was 65 years old when his son Methuselah was born and that Enoch walked with God after Methuselah was born 300 years and had more sons and daughters. In this scripture you get the impression that Enoch didn't walk with God before he had Methuselah. The birth of this child brought him into close relationship with God. The fact Enoch named his son Methuselah, which means uh, man of the dart, or when he is dead it shall be sent, talking about the deluge of the flood. This indicates he had a revelation that the world would last just as long as that child would, and no longer. God was saying, when that child dies, I will deal with the world. How would we react if we'd received such a revelation from God? Suppose God said that one of your children would last as long as the world. What would you do? God didn't mention to Enoch that Methuselah would be the oldest man on record. So getting a revelation like that would surely make him think God's judgment would be imminent. Can you imagine what went on in his mind every time the child had a cough or a cold or fell sick? He'd have been watching that child like a hawk with bated breath expecting God's judgment any moment. From the time the child was born, the world seemed to lose all attraction for Enoch. He realised there was a day of reckoning coming, and he knew he couldn't squander how many days he had left by living a frivolous, unprofitable life. He had to make sure his words and actions counted when under the scrutiny of his maker. He needed to know he could stand and not crumble in shame. Psalm 1 verse 5 says, The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The man or woman who begins to walk with God feels no pull towards the world. Because when you're on a quest for truth, it's very easy to see through all that glitter and glamour on offer. When I was growing up and trying the world out, it wasn't long before I realised that there was far more hypocrisy in the nightclubs than I ever saw in the churches. The drink, the drugs, the loud laughter covered up so many broken hearts and lives. Hurting souls have to escape reality somehow. And then there were the, the wolves of both sexes who were just on the prowl looking for their next conquest to spice up their lives. I encountered so many people who hid behind masks. I remember being on holiday in Portugal some years ago and talking with a young girl who was travelling alone. She really opened up to me and poured out her heart, confessing how empty and lonely she was. She had no friends, no boyfriend. And yet, on her Facebook page, she was another person entirely, always posting selfies of herself in exotic places and with exotic people, as though living a really exciting life. I could hardly take in the stark contrast. In Genesis 6, we read what the spiritual climate of the world Enoch was living in was like. In verse 2, it says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Angels actually left heaven to mate with earthly women. The result was that the earth was becoming a breeding ground the physical giants who were like mighty supermen. It was bad in those days. But what's it like in comparison today? We have legalised LGBT, alternative lifestyles, abortion, pornography, and illegal but rampant drug abuse, violence, paedophilia, and sex, traffic sorry, sex trafficking. I don't know whether angels are mating with women today, but I do know we are creating super beings through artificial intelligence, and who knows where that will lead. We are presently living in a very sick and very evil world. There may have been ungodly hybrid giants in Enoch's day, but from the very first day he had the revelation of the coming judgment, Enoch became a spiritual godly giant. And this is what we read in the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, 
The Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which, which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against God. Enoch was a prophet of God and testified in the wicked world he lived in that it was possible to walk with God even though he was a married man with a large family. The Bible records that Enoch walked with God 300 years after the birth of Methuselah and had more sons and daughters afterwards. You'd have thought that Enoch would have refrained from having more children if such a pronouncement was made. Some people look for ideal circumstances of seclusion and tranquility to be able to concentrate on God. They complain it's too hard to walk with God with a house full of noisy kids. They're burdened with bills and responsibilities. They have endless rows and disagreements and so on. There are even fights over the children. Yet this is the very situation the majority of people find themselves. <laughs> this is called family life. And the Bible says that God sets the solitary in families. If you can't live a godly life in the middle of mayhem, where you have to exercise patience, forgiveness, mercy and peacemaking on a daily basis, then I wonder what sort of godliness you really do have. In the middle of a crowded household, with all the responsibilities that go with it, Enoch lived a normal life, yet developed and enjoyed his walk with God. He had a sex life, but still pleased God. He was not fearful about the future. He believed that if judgment came, his family would be preserved if he walked with God and maintained a good testimony. We should all be concerned with this, that our family, children, grandchildren should be safe in the ark. Enoch was a public man and a family man. There was no Bible to get instructions from, no commandments to refer to or church to attend for encouragement. But he proved that any one of us can walk in close relationship with God if we have the same revelation he had. In Hebrews uh, chapter 11, it tells us that by faith Enoch was translated that he shouldn't see death. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. His testimony was his walk, his lifestyle. So what's our testimony? What sort of lifestyle as believers do we have? What do people see in us? Well, I know one thing for certain. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The secret of Enoch's personal walk with God was that. Not only did he have the revelation of the judgment that was coming on the world, and he would have to give an account for how he used or abused his gift of life, he also believed the revelation God had given him and he acted accordingly. And this was the same message that John the Baptist and Jesus preached. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If we really believe this message and are truly born of God, we can change our lifestyle no matter what background we've come from. The rewards for obedience are beyond our imagination. Before the coming judgment, Jesus is coming back and has promised his disciples that where he is, there we shall be also. Enoch the prophet was the first man to experience this promise, that he was translated. One day he just disappeared without trace. Enoch wasn't living in the Garden of Eden, but the Bible says he walked with God. He started and must have continued doing this for 300 years after Methuselah was born. His lifestyle was consistent. Story goes that he went out for a walk one day with God and God said, don't go home today, Enoch. You're much nearer my home than yours, so come home with me. <laughs> and he was gone. Doesn't that sound beautiful? He was translated, carried over or carried across. What does that mean? Well, God carried him across death. He didn't see death. God just picked him up carry him over and put him down on the other side. And this, hopefully, is what's going to happen to us. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, it says, The devil in Christ will rise first, and we, 
if we're still alive and remaining on the earth, will be caught up to meet him in the air. <laughs> what a thrilling thought. Can you see the world change? He's coming back very soon. May God steer us with the reality of that revelation so that we endeavour to do what Enoch did and walk with God. God bless you.